we will plot the streamlines next. What I'll do is I'll turn off the velocity magnitude contours and click on this icon, the streamline icon. I'll call this streamlines. OK. And for start from, I'm going to select far field one and I'll explain in um, a second the implication of that. So select far field one and say preview seed points. And to see the seed points, you have to actually zoom out to the far field and you see the seed points here and they're going to be 25 seed points. So what the post processor is doing is from the velocity field, it's calculating, you know, what, so if I release a particle here, how is it going to move through the flow? So what it's calculating are actually particle paths rather than streamlines. But as we saw before, the two, the particle paths and streamlines are equivalent in steady flow. So, you know, even though it's, it's uh, plotting particle paths, they can be interpreted as streamlines. And now if I say apply, I see the path taken by particles, you know, that would be released um, if they are released over here. And if I zoom in, <clears throat> I see what happens to, you know, that particle. And I can increase the number of sampling points. So I release more particles. And I can see the, you know, I can see more of those particle paths. And the spacing gives you an indication of the, the velocity. So the closer space they are, the, um, the higher is the velocity. But the interesting thing to note here is that there are no particles coming into this region, which is, you know, for that reason called the dead water region. Um, so we have to do some special things to see, you know, what the particle is doing here. We have to release particles actually in this region. Um, so let me do a couple of tweaks to this. First, I'm going to create a line somewhere upstream and release particles from there. And then I'm going to cr create a line here and release particles from there. So first, let's create a, a line upstream and then release particles from that line. I'll say location, line. I'll call this seed line. I played around with the location, so I said I'd start at minus 8, so that's 8 diameters upstream, and minus 5, and that's minus 8 to 5. And the number of sampling points, I put it as 51. So I did that because I wanted to release 51 particles. And I played around with these numbers and say apply. And if I zoom out, I will see that, that line that I just created. So let's release the particles from here rather than far field one. So I'll double click on streamlines and then release the particle from seed line. And I I got the best results if I made this maximum points the same as the number of sampling points. Um, it'll work even otherwise. Okay, so this way I get, you know, 51 equally spaced uh, points from which particles are released. So you see very interestingly what happens, you know, that none of these particles are going to, you know, reach this region. So to to so let's release some particles in this region, and let's create a second location. I call this seed line two, 
and this was located at 0.5 which is the radius of the cylinder minus 0.4 and 0 0.5 0 0.4 and apply okay and actually the number of samples I just did four and you'll see in a second the effect of that and I'll create a second streamline object so I'll duplicate that call the streamlines 2 and edit streamlines 2 by double clicking on it and I will use seed line 2 as the um, as the seat, you know, from where you're releasing the particles and that I will change to four. And you can preview the seed points. So, so it will release particles from those four points and say apply. Very interesting. So the particle that's released here moves along like here. The particle that released here moves along, you know, similar trajectory. But the particle that's released here, actually, um, it's, you know, it seems like it's moving um, like that. Make sure that this is only forward. Okay, it's integrating forward. And that particle. So, you know, you're getting some, some weird behavior here. And if I say forward and backward, so that'll show me where the particle has come from, would come from. So I'll say forward and backward and apply. And you can see that, you know, that particle, it's come from very close to this, this uh, dividing streamline. Um, and that didn't make too much of a difference here. That's because, you know, you have very low velocities here. Um, and what I did was I changed this, you know, I went and played around with this tolerance. And what that um, controls is, it's like, so if I, my tolerance is high, it'll say, you know, it'll use, when it's integrating the particle path, it'll use a larger time step. So it'll say, you know, it's moved from here to here. If I change, if I decrease the tolerance, it'll say it'll move from here to here, and then from here to here, and so on. That makes a big difference in this region because you have very low velocities and you have recirculating regions. So it's a very challenge to integrate in. Uh, it's very challenging to integrate in that region. So let me reduce that to 0 0.001 and say apply, and you see how that you know changed what's happening and if you look carefully what's happening here it's predicting that the particle is just going round and round and round uh, which is not really you know what's happening but it, it's an artifact of how it's calculating the um, the you know quote unquote the streamlines or the particle paths but you're getting the general shape of that recirculating region right um, and I can turn off the the seed lines and save my project